you know, I remember giving readings to a lot of people last decade. And one year was very, very particular. 215. You know, pigs do good in pig years, cats do good in cat years. But for some reason that year, goats weren't doing that pleasant. I heard hella horror stories. Hella horror stories. And most people were like, well, Gary, you know, I'm a goat. What's going on? Well, what was going on in 2015 is going to be the same thing that's going on in 2024. Once every decade, we have a karma year where everyone gets theirs. And it's coming. It's literally less than two weeks away. The universal year of karma. And a lot of people who think they're dragons, and they're about to kick ass. <laughs> well, some of you are, no doubt. But the fact of the matter is this. A lot of you guys are... You know, to the righteous people, to the people who do, do good by their wife and their kids and their family, do good by their friends, don't knowingly screw people over, you know, the people whose intentions are pure, you're good. You don't have anything to worry about. But there's a lot of people out there who are mentally ill who believe karma doesn't apply to them. If you have a soul, that means you can hold karmic debt because karmic debt attaches to the soul. So if you have a soul, you can have karma. If you don't have a soul, if you don't have a soul, then yeah, you might be right. Karma doesn't really affect you that much. A lot of soul is fucks in the world. But if you actually do have so, yeah, it's about to be uh, judgment time real, real soon. People don't quite understand that, but you will. I anticipate a lot of people are going to be coming to me next and saying, Gary, everything's fucked up. I lost my job. I have no money. Uh, yeah, karma. You know, one of the interesting things about life, uh, when you start looking at numerology, is the number eight. The number eight is karma and money, which means your money is affected by your karma. You know, there's a lot of people out there um, who are scamming in my name. Um, you know, I wish this was Russia sometimes. I really wish America was like Russia sometimes. So if I had a real issue, I just take care of it like a mobster. You know, it's okay to go out there and put people in the ground as long as you did not raise your hand against them first. Especially if you've helped these people in life. You know, people are, are very, very naive. I've had people get 5% or less of my information, and they think they're fucking gods. It's the most disgusting thing you, you could ever see. I invented, discovered the info, yet people, some people, very small percentage, I will say that, a very small percentage of the people who studied under me all of a sudden think they're fucking gods or they're angels because they have knowledge they got from another person. And then you have these fucking frauds on Twitter who knew nothing about numerology last year were kissing my ass in March, April, and by August, uh, September, they know it all, and now they're selling fucking shit. The fact is, they're, uh, what they're selling is basically my free info plus PSYOP information they found off the internet. That's it. 
and, and then they get a big head because they know stuff I knew basically 20 years ago. Yeah. Time to pay the piper very soon. I, I keep telling people there's a reason X starts with H. Homage starts with H. Help starts with H. Because if you intuitively help somebody, there's a karmic act in that. And what I mean by that is the person who is doing the kindness, the person who's helping someone isn't going to get good karma. But see, if the person who's being helped shuns it and then starts attacking the person who helped them, they're getting karma. And, and also, if they're a man, if they're a man, remember, karma ends with M-A, ma, man. If they're a man, that karma goes to their fucking families. The English language is built off numerology. It tells us what's going on. All you got to do is pay attention to life. Most people refuse to do that. That's fine. Because you can ignore reality. But you're not going to ignore the consequences of your reality. And karma. And, and, and karma is not by any chance a good system. Karma is a system here to hold us down. For instance, you could be a complete saint this lifetime, but if you did bad things in your past lifetime, they're coming back for you. It's it's kind of karmic balance, even though it's not a noble system. It is a fair system. So uh, that year of karma is going to fuck so many people up, and you know a lot of these only fan girls. Been living life easy. They make money through the internet, which men created, through smartphones, which men created, through computers and laptops, which men created. They go on OnlyFans, a platform men created through the internet, and then they start making millions just for taking off their clothes. Just for taking off their clothes. They are basically exploiting beta males. Ugly people. Maybe not not always ugly, but sometimes people who don't know how to talk to women. They exploit them. You know, I remember when I was talking to Hute. And he was telling me that all these big bad men who go to the gym and call themselves alpha males. When a woman takes them to court. They're crying in front of a little fucking judge. Because in this society, the pen has more power. And people really need to get accustomed to that. Women who are doing OnlyFans expect a very, very bad year next year. People who have learned from people and then been helped by people and then they go up and raise a hand against them. Oh, you're fucked. You're so fucked. You're so fucked. Personally, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm really going to enjoy 2024. Fortunes are going to be made. Fortunes are going to be lost. A lot of people have the poverty. But you know what? Being poor doesn't break good people. Never will. Never will. You know, I realistically could be a billionaire right now. Could be. If I did everything they told me to two decades ago, there's no doubt I'd be a billionaire right now. And I don't regret it one bit. Because when it's my turn to be judged, I'm not going to be a greedy fucking swine. People who fucking say I run a cult, you're so fucking crazy. No one who's in GG33 thinks I run a cult. Outsiders might. 
I do not. A lot of people in this world think I run a fucking cult. Never have, never will. You know, one of the things I'm proud of is no one can actually buy into GG33 without an interview, without a non-disclosure. There's no other group. Maybe there is, but 99% of the group just pay your in. doesn't work that way with me. You're a fucking... I don't want your money. You're a fucking whore. I don't want your money. If you're a communist, I surely don't want your money. That's simple. I don't care. I really don't. You know, I know every... I already know fucking everyone's future. I certainly know my future. What the fuck do I have to chase money for and do things that I believe are immoral when I know I'm going to have one of the biggest bags and numerology basically backs it up. I'm already rich. Give a fuck. Society should be very, very lucky. It should be very, very happy that a person with my moral code is actually in charge of this information. Man, if if other people knew what I knew, bro, they'd be selling this shit to the highest bidder. They would have fucking impregnated 20 women, had 30 kids. Do you, you, you guys think looks are the most important thing? Well, I used to pull them easy, easy when I was younger. Easy. And I was broke. The most important thing in life, and obviously it depends on the individual, be true to yourself. You know, some people don't have a conscience, so I'm definitely not talking to you motherfuckers. But people have to be true to their self. If you look in the mirror and you basically see a piece of garbage because you went out there and did things for money that are immoral, oh, you screwed your friend over to make a couple thousand dollars, oh, you screwed your family over just so you can have some more money, what do you think? That shit's not going to come back to you? Listen, I'm not religious. I'm not going to get on my fours and start praying. I'm not going to go to church or a mosque in a synagogue. But (laughs) if you don't believe God is real, you're out your fucking mind. You're out your fucking. But see, God doesn't have He has better things to do than to pay attention to our little feeble problems. The same way we look at an ant colony. Thinking, you know, we don't give a damn. We don't interfere in that stuff. Let them live the same way God's like, let them live. Because people know what the difference is between right and wrong. They know. They know what the difference is. Even fucking animals know what the difference between right and wrong is. What are you telling me? You're not at the same level as a fucking animal? (sighs) Carlos, my brother, you're approved to talk. What's going on, brother? I think I put him in there. Try to speak. Okay. Well, when Carlos hears this, you can jump in. But listen, guys, it's very simple. Be a good person. Be a good person. That doesn't mean be soft. That doesn't mean be a pushover. That doesn't mean let people step on you. But if you see someone for the first time, be kind. If you see someone for the first time, there's no need to be aggressive unless they are. Now, obviously, if someone disrespects you, it's a whole different ball game. But no one should ever say, 
Yo, I started that shit. We we shouldn't have issues like that. You know, one of the things this knowledge has uh, given me is I remember when I was younger, and you guys got to remember, I was the only person in the fucking world who knew this when I was young. And I knew it in my level, okay? Man, the, 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 the way I felt that I could do this and no one else could, oh, yeah. I felt real good about myself, but never did I think I was a god or an angel or a saint just because I have knowledge. If you have knowledge as a human, you're just an enlightened being. That's it. Old soul, you can add that on and a few other things. But you cannot say you're a fucking god. You cannot say you're an angel. We definitely can call some people demons because they're possessed. <laughs> we all know horrors, unfortunately. You know, let's just hope they're not in your family. That's when it gets real, real interesting. You know, uh, a lot of people in this world, uh, they have illnesses and they have sicknesses and they blame everyone. You know, maybe you should be looking at your mom, mother. Flat out. Maybe you should be looking at your mother. Because if a woman is completely healthy, there's no reason to have unhealthy kids. Unless she's a whore. Yeah. You know, in the Quran, in the Bible, you know, they talk about stoning. And it seems like a barbaric act. But let me ask you something. What's, what's more barbaric? A woman having five kids with four different men? And we know for a fact when a woman has a kid and more than one man, well, then the kids she has with the second, third, fourth man, they're not completely healthy. Not in all cases, but it's a high enough percentage where you understand that a woman is meant to be dominated by one man. Flat out, a woman is meant to be dominated by one man. She's meant to be impregnated by one man's seed. Because once you start mixing fucking seeds from different men, you got real problems. So we have societies now where you have women who have two, three, four different kids with three different men. And these kids grow up to be low IQ. They have genetic defects, grow up to be criminals. Just facts. Just straight. You might not want to accept this, but it's just facts. And to me, that's barbaric. Kids, babies are the most innocent, defenseless people in our society. Not BBP, not whore who go around here who can't fucking close their legs. They're not the most vulnerable people in society. Those are people who made their own choices and have to live with them. But babies, kids, they have no, they're defenseless. And society should be judged by how the kids grow up and how the kids are treated. And honestly, if the kids are safe, you know, um, some of my family lives in Russia. Uh, my nephew, uh, he lives in Siberia. And, you know, not Vladivostok or something like that. It, it gets very cold in the, in the winter, but it, it's fine in the summer. And uh, the kid goes to school by himself. Okay, I want to repeat this. Ten nine-year-old kid goes to school by himself and then when school is over he doesn't come home until 9 p.m 
So again, I want to make this abundantly clear. He goes to school about 8 a.m. by himself and doesn't come home until about 9 p.m. by himself. And the parents don't have to worry about anything. No one's going to kidnap the kids. No one's going to try to fucking hurt the kids. No one's going to try to molest the kids because they don't have fucking who fucking claim, oh, we need equal rights so they can go around society and hunt fucking kids. I want to repeat that. See, in America, we we have something called a fucking rainbow coalition. And uh, 40% of pedophiles, in my opinion, are fucking, excuse me, 40% of uh, gay men are pedophiles. Don't believe me? Ask yourself why when women lesbians go adopt kids, they don't care if it's a man, a, a, a little boy or a little girl. Yet when male couples who shouldn't be allowed to have kids in the first place, but when they adopt kids, uh, 90, 95% of them want little boys. They insist on little boys. Why is that? Use your imagination, people. I don't think it's too hard to understand what's going on here. And when you understand that in America in 1984, 1985, when I was six and seven years old, I used to walk myself to school and back every single day at six, seven. If my kids did that today, I'd be arrested for fucking child endangerment. Why? Because there's a lot of danger in the streets. Why? Because we live in a fucking pedophile society, a degenerate society full of fucking whores who look at little kids and they don't see, oh, that's the future of our society. They see people they can molest and exploit. But see, in Russia, you don't have running around talking about we need rights. In Dubai, in the Middle East, we don't have running around there. So guess what? Those little kids can walk around and feel safe because nothing's going to happen. The same way when in 1984, when I was six, seven years old, I could have walked the streets safe because nothing would have happened to me. But we don't live in that society anymore. And what allowed something like that to happen? What allowed a, a, a sick, degenerate society like that to flourish? One word. Feminism. You see, um, during World War II, when the men went off to work, um, you know, in America, Canada, Western culture, um, someone had to fill in the factories. All the men were fighting. So it was the women. The women had to go in the factories because it was a necessity at that point. There was no men. They were all fighting. Someone had to make the, um, make the arms. Someone had to make the ammunition. So women did it. And then when the war was over in 45, the women were told to go home. And they did. But then we had someone like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. They decided they were going to exploit the situation. They decide they're going to tell women, you know what? Uh, you're basically slaves at home because you're taking care of your kids. <laughs> Can you imagine how stupid you have to be to believe you're a slave just because you're taking care of your kids? But women are very emotional and that they can be manipulated based off emotional conversion. So what happened was these women decided to go to work. And again, that's that's okay to some point. But you have to understand when women go to work, they deal with stress. And when they deal with stress, all of a sudden they become more masculine. Because that's what stress does. You know, um, the pig. My enemy sign. But the pig is something, you know. Very different than most. See, you can have a pig in a pig pen, and that pig will be jolly and will eat whatever it needs to. But you take that same pig and you put it in the fucking wild, all of a sudden, it's going to grow tusks. And it's going to be very, very dangerous.
I hope you guys understand the moral of the story. Soon, very, very soon, 2024 will be upon us. And unlike most years, it's not going to be, oh, dragon's going to be great in the dragon year. Notice I haven't said, any, oh, who's going to be the dragon star in 2024? I, like I did in 2023 and 2022 and 2021. You know how many fucking oxes I know became multi-millionaires in 2021 ox year? We know about Tate's ass in 2022. Cat's been fucking rising up this year. John Jones and all these other guys. But at the end of the day, karma's coming. Karma's coming. And <laughs> a lot of people are going to get theirs. A lot of people are going to get theirs. If you're a good person, take some popcorn, enjoy the show. But I want you to understand something. If Unless someone's a dog, that's the only exception, or someone's in the current year cycle. If they're going to tell you that they had the worst year of their life in 2024, you know what it is. You know exactly what it is. Karma. You know. Mm. Society is unsustainable the way it is now. Can't have only fan hoes making a million bucks and guys who work on the streets making 50. Okay. It's unsustainable. It's not going to last. And I encourage people to understand that karma is very real and intentions matter. Even the court of law has told us that intent matters. That's why there's a difference between murder and manslaughter. I mean, the result's the same. Someone's dead. The only difference is intent. If you kill someone in a car accident, most likely you didn't intend to kill someone. So there is a difference. Anyways, GG33, if you're in the group, um, our new forms are pretty much ready. I'll be letting gold members, readers in there first, and we'll move down to silver and bronze later. Um, if you're a GG33 member and you signed up like in 215, 214, man, you got the deal of a lifetime. Because right? once you're in, I don't charge anyone anything else. There's no monthly fees. There's nothing like that unless you're in the academy. I literally gave my people a free, two free apps this year. One of them, you don't even need me anymore. Like, if you have the gold fucking app, you just <laughs> put in the birthday and it, it's there. It's there. Um, that app will never be for to, sit, for to sale for the general public. It's only for GG33 gold members, but bronze and silver have an app too. Not as advanced, but still extremely dangerous. Then we have Qit. Um, you know, one of the things in society that people have to understand is balance. And that's the art of politics, at least a good politician. I got plenty of people in my group who want me to do one thing and then other people in my group who want me to do another. And I have to basically do what's best for the group as a whole. And that's what I do every single time. Um, I could have made those apps that's, you know, out for the public 10 times better. But I won't. Because gatekeeping is real. One of the best decisions of my life was to gatekeep. I'm so fucking happy I did that because I see what happens when you don't gatekeep. Uh, people get a little bit of my information. All of a sudden, they're gods in training. Fucking joke. It's a fucking joke, man. It really is. How you can believe just because you know something that you're a god. Do you understand? I consider myself probably one of the most intelligent 
uh, men who ever lived. And I'm telling you right now, we can't even comprehend God. We can't even comprehend that. That's why I don't pay attention to the Bible, the Quran. I don't pay attention to any of that stuff. Because whatever is written in there was written by a man. Okay, I don't believe the Virgin uh, Mary had a child without sex. I don't believe an illiterate man wrote the Quran. I don't believe this stuff. That doesn't mean what's in the books isn't real. Not at all. Some of the stuff in that books, you know, like the pathway to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> That's like one of the most on point sayings in the world. Just look at women. They have all the good intentions in the world. What happens in the end? Exactly. You, you look at the Quran. The book hasn't been rewritten, at least in my knowledge, ever. You know, the Bible, fuck, that's since been rewritten so many times. I keep telling people, uh, Jesus stoned the fucking whore. I'm telling you right now, Jesus stoned the whore. If, if we're the belief the Bible is real and Jesus is real, I don't believe that Jesus uh, said that without sin cast the first stone. Because not all sin is the same. I'm sorry. Not all sin is the same. If you fucking steal food to feed your babies, is that really a sin? <laughs> Come on. People are going to do what they have to do to feed their kids. So if you don't feed your kids and you go and you can't feed your kids and you go out there and you steal, is that a sin? No, of course not. I mean, are you doing the right, the right thing? Probably not. But that's not a sin. You know what is a sin? Going into a fucking store and looting fucking nice clothes. Looting fucking jewelry, looting. That's a sin. Because you don't actually need that stuff. You want that stuff. Big fucking difference. So, no, I, you know, when, you know, if all those people in San Francisco were going and stealing this, stealing that, if they were stealing food, I would be like, what's wrong with society? That these people can't find a way to feed themselves. That is something wrong with society. When people can't find enough to feed themselves. That's a societal problem. What the fuck you think's going to happen if people can't feed their kids? They're going to be singing Kumbaya? What the fuck is wrong with you? But when people start conning, stealing, just to enrich themselves, yeah, that's... That's some bad karma. You know, um, I have people who want to sign up for my classes all the time. My goal of class is 23300 goes up every two months and will continue to go up every two months because I'm sick of these billionaires getting my stuff and saying, oh, you're fucking selling this shit for dirt cheap. It is what it is. Yeah. But when you look at the big picture and you see what's going on, you have to understand that intent matters so fucking much. And me, I'm different. Don't, don't, don't just hit me up and you're like, yo, Gary, I want to get in your group. No, you got to pass the interview. You got to pass the interview. You guys know what I am by now. You don't pass the interview. I don't give a fuck about your money. Another thing is, there's a 100K requirement to get in the gold. If you say you want to give me 23K, I'm going to tell you, yo, you got to show me you at least have 100K in assets. And if you can't, I'm not taking your money. See, I don't have fuck you money, but I kind of do. The sense where my morals will not allow me to do certain things. If someone has 40K to their fucking name, why would I take 23K from them? Why would I take more than 50% of someone's net worth? I'm not interested in doing that type of stuff. 
What do you think? Andrew Tate would do the same thing or anyone in the war room? Shit, pay them, you're in. That's it, not with me. Not with now. Obviously, if you're in GG33 Academy, I'm not doing background checks if you're or not. So, you know, it is what it is, but <laughs> that's your glass ceiling if you are. And I don't care how this sounds. I really don't. Too many people care what other people think about them. What the fuck do you care? Half the people going to hate you anyway. No matter what you do, people going to hate you. I went to the mall last month. And I threw money. Money. Off the second floor so the people on the, uh, on the first floor could fucking pick it up. I threw money away. And then afterwards, people had the audacity to criticize me. Well, why didn't you go to the hood and give the money away there? What? Would you care who I give my money away? I just threw it off in the mall and people picked it up. And all of a sudden people are telling me, oh, if you really want to make a difference, you should go out to the fucking hood and give it to them. No, 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 no. See, if I go out to the hood, I'm going to need three or four bodyguards to make sure I don't get fucking robbed. At the mall, who the fuck's going to rob me, especially in Aventura? <laughs> Not to mention that bodyguards with me too, but, you know, we weren't expecting anything to pop off. I gave away money that had pretty people criticize me. Do you understand? No matter what you do, people are going to criticize you. I have many friends who are Christian. Sometimes people criticize them for not being Christian enough. Sometimes people criticize them for being too Christian. Same thing with Islam. Oh, you're too, you're 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 too uh, into the Quran, or you're not into the Quran enough. You know, one thing I don't understand about you know religious people is how do you pick and choose what you follow? Like for instance. I have a moral code. I follow my moral code. I don't make exceptions for it. You know, like for instance, oh, I don't cheat my wife, but damn, that girl's so fine. I'm gonna have to. No, no. Oh, uh, I usually don't fucking steal, but uh, you know what? I'm just gonna, you know, do it this one time. I don't think anything's gonna happen to me. No, not at all. I remember, um, 2015. I found a wallet. The wallet had about $3,000 in it. First thing that came to my mind wasn't, oh, I just came up. Oh, damn. Let's go to fucking and buy some shit. No, the first thing that came to mind is, how do I return this money? That's the first thing that came to my mind. I opened up the wallet. I saw the address. I knocked on the door. And I gave the person his wallet back. And they want to give me money. I'm like, no, I didn't want anything. You don't need to get rewarded for doing the right fucking thing. But you know how it does reward you? Karma. Karma. I once lost my wallet in a place called Breezewood, Pennsylvania. I was driving through from D.C. to going back to Cleveland. And I don't know, I guess I left my wallet on the counter. My ID, my credit cards. I don't know, like 800 hours, usually what I keep in my wallet around that much. And all of a sudden, um, my wife calls me and she's like, yo, we got a package. I'm like, what are you expect? I'm, I wasn't expecting a package. Someone found my wallet and they sent it back from Pennsylvania. The only thing they took from it was the shipping and handling that it costs to send it back. That that happened because of good karma. I can't tell you the number of times I've been in the casino and I've lost my wallet and every single time it got back to me. I mean, yes, I've lost my ID before and I didn't find it, but whenever I lost my wallet and there was money into it, every single time, whether it be Atlantic City, Vegas, wherever else I was, 
it came back. But, you know, when I was younger and I was doing stupid shit, it didn't work that way. Karma matters. You cannot escape karma. You literally cannot escape karma. And if you do good things, don't expect good karma. Because what people don't understand is me returning someone's wallet in 215. And believe me, that was a matrix test. That was so a matrix test. Because in 215, I was not a millionaire yet. And obviously, I don't think 3000 was a lot of money, but I was still not a millionaire in 2015. And that was a matrix test. 2015 is a universal eight year. Matrix tried to test me. It tried to set me up. Are you going to take that wallet? No, I did the right thing. And because I did the right thing, I didn't get good karma. I want to, I want to, I want people to understand this. I did not get good karma. I just didn't have any negative karma attached to me. See, having no bad karma might as well be good karma. Think of all of us as beach balls. And when, when you have a soul, then karma can be attached to it. And if you have something, if you've done negative things, example, only fan, ho, exploiting men for money. Or fucking men, fucking pimping women for fucking money. Regardless, if you're doing negative things, negative things are going to attach to your soul. And they're going to basically keep you down. But if you have no negative attachments, nothing can keep you down. Absolutely nothing. So don't worry about good karma. There is no such thing as good karma. There's negative karma. You know what? Let me rephrase that. There's not having any karma hold you back. And there's having karma hold you back. That's the two differences. Not good or bad karma, but you either have karma holding you back or you have nothing holding you back. That's the way you have to look at karma. And a lot of people in society don't really understand how that works. And that's okay. Because your dumb ass is going to get reincarnated until you fucking understand. You know, I think there's about 3,000 billionaires in the world. And I've probably talked to about, I don't know, about 2% of them. So obviously I haven't talked to 98. I, and again, I haven't talked to Elon Musk or anyone on that level yet, even though I'm pretty good friends with Musk bodyguards and stuff like that. Um, no, oh, by the way, guys, if you really want to get to the rich and famous, uh, get to their bodyguards. <laughs> okay. Like, for instance, uh, the guy who set up private security for Elon Musk is the same guy who um, set up and the private security for Floyd. They know all of these guys. The people who run the uh, security companies and stuff like that. They know all of these guys. Another interesting fact. I'll never fucking post it. I'll never say any more than this. But Elon Musk has a 3-3 in his phone number. As a matter of fact, the richest man I know worth $11 billion has a 3-3 in his phone number. A lot of people with that 3-3 in their phone number tend to be extremely wealthy. Then you have the, uh, these other guys who talk to me, and all of a sudden they have 28, 28 in their number. But it is what it is. But, yeah, if you want to get to people, um, the easiest people to get to, the easiest way is through people's bodyguards. Second, um, NBA, NFL, um, MLB. Of all those sports, the easiest to get people and the athletes to get to is NBA. And the reason that is, is because the NBA does something called NBA Summer League in Las Vegas. And in the NBA Summer League, you can literally come up to the players very easily. You know, so again, um, you can't do that in NFL. You can't do that in baseball. There's a big, big, you know, line separating the fans and the players. But with the NBA, yeah, you can do that. And that's how I exploited that situation in a decade ago. 
used to go up to these uh, NBA coaches, players with my sheets and stuff like that. Kobe's an 11, Michael's an 11, all this other stuff. Uh, Garnett's an 11, and Paul Pierce is an 11. So I used to go out there, and most people thought I was crazy, but some of these people I hooked up with in 2011 became somebodies. And I'm telling you right now, if it wasn't for my work with the Golden State Warriors, LeBron James would have seven rings, and he would be officially known as the GOAT. Oh, God. It's, it's interesting how life works. Uh, anyways, let's see. Um, I see 10 people requesting to talk, but for some reason, I can't see who's actually requesting. I don't know what the hell it is with this goddamn uh, spaces. It's never... Oh, oh, now I see a request. Okay. Let's see. All right, Mr. Cat Prince, uh, why don't you bless us with some of your um, knowledge? What's good, G? What's up, gang? What's up, people? How are you doing today? Um, well, having trouble sleeping, but I'm sure that's the case for everyone here. Yeah, man. Uh, so I spent yesterday defending your honor. I be arguing with people online about this numerology shit, and they like, they like to call you a cult member, no, a cult leader, like to call you a, a psychopath. Yep. I'm like, man, do you realize just like you should be grateful for the basic info that we give out for free and you want more? You're begging for more? Do you realize how fucking thirsty you sound right now? But Entitled NPCs, brother. Uh-huh. I call them spiritual communists. Uh-huh. All right, wh- uh, whoever's that that has that background noise, turn that shit down. Oh, no, I'm at the gym right now. I'm about to head out. So that'd be, that'd be, uh. All right, brother. Well, I appreciate the kind words. No, I'm... Uh, put up the good fight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And I guess I'll see you in Miami soon. Uh, 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 I'll talk about that later. <laughs> What's the matter, man? Not enough hoes on the team here. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. Hey, hey, hey. You got to put the word out. I'm a faithful man now. Too many people are saying that, hey, Maurice, you got to stop messing with hoes. I don't mess with hoes anymore. I got a girl. I'm faithful. <laughs> I'm faithful. You don't mess with hoes anymore. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, so 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 wait a second. Uh, I, I'm having an effect on you there too. Yeah, I, actually no. I've always been a loyal man. I've always been a very faithful. Uh oh, you always been a loyal man. <laughs> yeah. How many girls you cheat on? Cheat on? Actually none. I'm not a cheater. I tell them. I tell them. You never. You never cheated on a woman. I, I tell them I got hoes, and they either they're cool with it or they're not cool with it. Oh, they're cool with it. I yeah. see. Yo, only only a hoe would be cool with another Listen, hoe. I need to stop disrespecting him. <laughs> disrespecting my woman. <laughs> you don't want to believe I got game like hey, that. Hey, brother, bro, brother, brother, brother. When I talked to your mother, I showed her respect mm-hmm. uh, because I respect mothers. I respect women. Mm-hmm. I do not respect hoes in any way whatsoever. Fair enough. You keep on, you keep on bringing my mom. She don't even remember you. I'd be like, Gary. She'd be like, Gary who? Oh, stop. <laughs> your mom likes me better than you. Maybe, but still, <laughs> still. <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly, man. You know, um, yeah, you know, I'm one of those guys. I don't actually have to do much for the women to like me. <laughs> You're not special. You're not special. I'm the same way. Okay. Uh, okay. Don't put me on the radio, hey, brother. Brother, bro, 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 brother, brother. Listen, if you would have, how old are you right 24. now? I'm- okay, I wasn't married to twenty. I wasn't married to twenty-four, bro. I would have been running circles around you, bro. Whatever, bro. Give me on Circle. the radio. Circle. Get me on the radio. Get me on the radio. I'll circle. run circles around you on the radio. Get you on the radio. I don't know, but but see, but see, that's that's the mm-hmm. point. You want me to get you on the radio? I got myself on the radio. <laughs> I got you though. I'm your apprentice. I'm one of your apprentices. I'm one of your proteges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you definitely are, brother. You definitely are. And I'm man. in my prime too. Anyway, I'm in my prime too. Yeah, I, I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I can not work you. If this is your prime, I, 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 we got a lot of work I to do. I can work you. They gonna, you going to see? I'm going to get uh, all the brand deals. I, I don't I'm gonna think. Get all the brand deals. going to be like, damn. Uh-huh. Man, who's this little little nigga, Cat Prince? He kind of smart. He kind of funny. He better than Gary. Uh-huh. Listen to your old ass talking uh-huh. about religion, uh-huh. talking about politics. No one cares about that shit, Gary. No one cares about that shit, huh? No one in my generation. I'll say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. stick to your hoes, bro. <laughs> all right, Gary. Uh, Take your host. Right, yeah, I love you, bro. Love everybody in here. Yes, yeah, sir, brother. Stay you safe. Too. You definitely need to. Uh, cat, what's up? Another cat. Oh, of course. Okay. No. Oh, whatever. All right, all right you good? Close, Hmm. 
I guess you're a little sleepy. All right. Anyways, uh, Car- Carlos. You showed me up there, but it was good. My brother, how we doing today? How you doing, my brother? Uh, still recovering. I can't walk yet, but soon, soon. Soon, bro. Soon. You know, yesterday I had a uh, the first time I was doing uh, something with my. I was actually just went go karting, and uh, it's a bit sore, but uh, yeah, it feels good to be human again slowly. Yeah, I think the worst part is I have to put a bag over my cast when I take a shower. Yeah, and you yeah, know, you I'm, I'm 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 here in Miami. It gets hot. Not this time of the year, but you know, it gets hot. And you know, I'm usually the type of guy who takes like three fucking showers a goddamn day. Uh, 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 now I'm kind of living I'm myself the same to one. way, bro. I'm the same <laughs> way, you know. But then I, you you find your little tricks. I actually bought a, a thing. I was, I, I was uh, I'm in Dubai, right? So in the summer, normally mm-hmm. I go to Europe, I go to Ibiza, San Tope, whatever, right? But this time I had to cancel because I broke my Achilles, and so I stayed in Dubai, which is actually quite hot. Uh, I was in my villa, <clears throat> and uh, I thought I was like, how can I still live a normal life? So I bought this special bag like plastic thing that i could just go to the swimming pool and everything with so just check it out in amazon really send, I, send, send me a link when you have a I'll, chance okay I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you send me a link man how's everything else going brother man life is an upward trajectory everything's good bro really uh, family healthy love is everywhere uh, abundance he, he, of all kinds you notice you notice what i asked him how everything is doing the first thing he said family good that that that's one of the first signs that you know someone cares more about themselves uh, others than himself. You know, you always pay attention to how people talk, and you know that's why I consider Carlos one of the most honorable men on here. Uh, you know, anything anything you need, Carlos will you know cover. I, I I anything I ask this guy, he'll fucking do, and vice versa. Um, not many people like that in the world, and you know, um. He got in a little bit of uh, trouble with Andrew Tate because he was associated with him. And, you know, did he back down? No. He said, fuck everybody. I'm doing what I need to do. And then he uh, basically did a lot of good things in the past year. You've had a really good year, brother, uh, out, outside your injury. You've had a Honestly, very the, good the year. Injury was, the injury was good as well because uh, I used these three months where I couldn't walk at all. I used it to read books and meditate and actually just – work from home i look like fucking albert einstein sometimes with my hairs everywhere uh, but, <laughs> but but it was very it was very effective it was very good you know it's actually it, it was a good thing like i look back in time i would still break my my achilles the same way because i re- i realized that uh, happiness comes in different forms you know and the happiness of being unable to move but read many books and learn many things and being very curious and becoming significantly more spiritual during the time and so on. It's something that you cannot do with all the distractions. I mean, right now I can walk. I live in the epicenter of Dubai. So if I go downstairs, I see Miss Kazakhstan, uh, Miss Russia 2020. I mean, it's just too many distractions, you know? And of course I, I exercise on all of them. Uh, <laughs> so not having them is like, so not having them is like. <laughs> all right, well, you a pip out there. No, no, I just enjoy life to the to, to the max, you know. And uh, but yeah, you know, like it, 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 it's been a very good year, bro. A very good year. And I feel, you know, it is funny. You told me yourself that um, my 2024 should be ridiculous, actually, in a good way. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. You you know the numbers game. One hundred percent, bro. And, and and you know I trust you with these things because uh, you've been right every time. And and it's no. funny because <laughs> everything is just pointed towards the direction of I might actually become billionaire by next year, you know, just with everything, how everything is looking. It's just so ridiculous. So, yeah, maybe maybe you are right after all. Everything, every single business is just looking to peak sometime in like June, July, August of 2024. Yeah. Listen, brother, I remember the first time uh, we talked and you gave me your birthday. I, I, I basically told you you're going to have that fucking bag because, and, and quite frankly, you outwork everybody. You, you're constantly working. You're constantly with your brothers fucking making money. I, I haven't seen too many pictures of you fucking goofing off and doing bullshit, but always hustling, brother. Um, 
my man over here is also no, the course, you know, I, creator I, I, of the I circle. It. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy doing my thing, but I keep everything very private, you know? Like, nobody, I don't even follow any woman on Instagram or anything like that. It's not the perception I want to <clears throat> create to the outside either. I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. Everything I do is for the purpose of conquering the world, actually. Nothing else. Uh, what, you know, what, what in, with all these people listening and in quite quite frankly this is the closest to a future billionaire most of these people are ever going to get what advice would you give people um this you know if, if they want to follow your footsteps i'm obviously you got to work hard obviously you know the usual stuff but what pieces of advice would you give people who are listening right now and they want to be in your shoes yeah, so <clears throat> I would say one thing, and this is actually a very clear piece of feedback that I would give every single time anybody asks, which is don't follow my footsteps. You have to follow your footsteps, right? And and the 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 this is very important that you understand. This is not like the cheesy, just be yourself, right? This is, goes deeper than that. <clears throat> Let me explain. You cannot compare yourself with LeBron James because he's tall and black and athletic and you will never be the best basketball player in the world uh, but maybe you know if i compare myself with lebron james right i'm white almost green actually uh, i'm not athletic <laughs> you got so much money you're green <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not as athletic as him i literally broke my achilles because i had a day of sparring boxing and playing paddle okay now, I'm athletic, I'm good at sports, but not fucking LeBron James. However, I'm better at business than him. I'm more charismatic than him. I sing better than him. Uh, I have other skills that are better than, him, than, 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 uh, than how he is at those things. So why do I compare myself? Do I compare myself with LeBron James or with Elon Musk or with, <clears throat> I don't know, the CEO of Vanguard? No, I compare myself with my, the best version of myself. Yeah? And that's the key part. So I would say to anybody that just fuck, fuck being billionaire. It's not about that. Maybe it's not your path. Maybe your path is to have a family in a farm with 20 cows, and that's how you fulfill your purpose in this life. But you will only know that when you know yourself and when you know what uh, your skill set is, when you know what makes you really happy, actually. How do you accomplish that? Spending time alone in solitude, no internet, no music, just by yourself and your thoughts, which you can call it prayer, you can call it meditation, you can call it contemplation. So do that every day and live very fast and, and do things that excite you, right? <clears throat> so when you're just bored in your home, just think about what can I do? And <clears throat> when you're thinking of all the things, just go for the things that excite you the most, you know? It doesn't have to be the one that is easiest. No, it's the one that excites you the most. Well, maybe it's just learning something new. Maybe it's just reading a specific book you always wanted to read. Maybe it's going downstairs and getting a coffee. Why, why do I say that? Because <clears throat> the universe... You can call it God, you can call it the creator, you can call it anything. Create synchronicities throughout your day, throughout your life, all the time. And those synchronicities, what they do is they bring you what you truly, what your spirit truly deserves to be its path. So you just have to relax, do what's most excite, exciting at all times, connect with your spirit more and more every day. And whether your path is working hard and becoming a billionaire, whether your path is becoming a football player, whether your path is being happy with the family and kids in the fucking mountains, meanwhile you just milk your cows, <clears throat> or whether your path is just being a very overly structured person that is a, is a, is a legal expert, whatever it is that your path is, <clears throat> you'll, you'll find it, right? That's what worked for me. Um. Tell me now about some of the struggles you had in life. Um, some because I believe um, the struggles basically, you know, kind of mold the man. If a man has no struggles, he has no backbone. Tell us uh, some of the struggles you've had in life and what you have to overcome to be in the position that you're in today. Yeah, actually. Uh, I, I don't like talking about struggles uh, in the past too much. The reason is because I program my mind. I don't, I don't want to say that I forget them, but I program my mind. I re reprogram my past. I don't know how to explain it, but <clears throat> I will do my best. 
let's imagine uh, when you were a kid, you were always complaining and a bitch. If you believe that's what you were as a kid, in a way, that defines who you are today. But if you reprogram your mind and you say, no, I was a motherfucker, everybody loved me, I've always been good with people, I've always been charismatic and charming, then in a way your brain really takes the same path for the future. It's almost like pattern recognition. <clears throat> and it sounds a bit odd, okay, but, but it's, it's, it's how I do it. So, but there are things that I know shaped me into the person I am today in a good way. Like I had a lot of failures, I lost money. I lost actually all my money a couple of times by investing in my own businesses. I have gotten my heart broken um, <clears throat> a couple of times, very, very strongly. I was very, very sad. Uh, I had to build myself up from zero. I was faced with a backlash. I was you know, essentially working for 18, 17 years in an industry where I became the absolute number one in. And I almost lost everything because I stood my, my ground on the principles. And then even my family close to me, they were telling me, maybe you should apologize. <clears throat> Everybody. Whoa, 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 whoa. Even your family members are telling you to apologize? Yeah, but you have to understand something. You have to be empathetic, right? Your mom, your dad, they love you so much. They don't have the full context of the situation. And they just want to protect you, right? And when they see that, that hell is going to rain upon you, fear will take over. And instead of giving you the right uh, counsel, the right tips, they, they will give you the tips based out of fear. They will tell you, you know, you work too much for this, you know, don't, maybe you should apologize, you know, maybe you should just, because your life is good, why would you risk everything, right? <clears throat> Everybody was like this around me. And so you realize you're alone, actually, ultimately in life, you are alone, actually, really, ultimately, when, you, when you're by yourself, with your own thoughts, with your own mind, you are alone. It's you and God, or you and, and whatever you believe in, yeah? And that is very liberating. So I think going through that was very liberating in a very good way, because now I have such a level of self-respect that nobody around me is allowed to be around me unless they actually improve my life considerably. I am already a happy person. I can be happy by myself in the fucking desert. I don't need anybody. I don't need no woman. I don't need nobody. Nobody. I don't even need family. <clears throat> However, I see now how people can improve my life. And that's the way in which I judge their value to me. Now, there are things that you cannot change, like family. Sometimes you don't like your family, but you still have to take care of them because it's your duty as a man. Yeah. There you the, go. I am the godfather of my people. I have dozens and dozens of people rely on me, and I pay for everything for them. And it makes me happy to do so because it's my... Is my duty in, in this world, in this world, part of my duty. Yeah? But that doesn't mean that I will spend every living second with them or that I will ask them for counsel or that I will keep them too involved in whatever is going on in my life because I only do so with those people that I know can add value to me. And that happened as a result of me facing the ultimate backlash of being wide, widely canceled and having no true deep, meaningful relationships besides actually my brother Asad um, that, that essentially um, made me realize that you better be alone than wrongly surrounded. And, and, and that actually is very good because you increasing your self-respect makes it... Um, it's a good filter uh, to, to not keep idiots around you that waste your time. I call them sunny boys for men. And I call him <laughs> for woman. Sunny boy sounds like a. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't like sunny boys. Oh yeah, let's go. He's gonna. He's gonna drink. Let's go party. And then there's no. They're nowhere to be seen when she hits the fan. Only there for sunny times. Yeah, sunny boys. That that that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, Carlos. Uh, one of the things I always tell people when I put them in positions of power is to me, loyalty is more important than almost anything else, because, you know, both me and you are very intelligent people. We can teach people how to think, but if they're not loyal, there's not much we can do. You can't teach loyalty. They either have it or they don't. Do you agree? Yes, 100%. There's a fine line that separates loyalty from stupidity for sure. 
And a person that is loyal to someone that creates no value for them is straight up retarded. But I think the combination of loyalty with critical thinking and self-respect is very important. If you are loyal and have immense amounts of self-respect, you will only be loyal to people that are good to you. Amen. 100%, brother. 100%. Uh, let like, me ask you this. I, when, I look at, when I look at people around me, I see mm -hmm. the biggest denominator of people that I like to keep around is people with a lot of self-respect. Always. Like, even women, I mean, either woman or men, they just have a lot of self-respect. Like, a woman will not allow herself to have her Instagram look like she's a whore. A woman will not allow herself to put the last name of her, fa of her father in question with her actions. Uh, you know, I, I, in turn, she will make sure that the man she's walking by is a good man that elevates her status and elevates her overall uh, credibility and reputation because she cares about her last name and she cares about her self-respect. And the same goes for men, actually. A man that has high amounts of self-respect will never allow himself to steal even if nobody's watching because he will know that even if nobody's watching, he is watching. And you cannot live yes. a life acting like the king if you deep down know you're a fucking stealing worm, thief, cunt. It's impossible, right? So if you really believe you are a king and a king and you believe that you need to have in life what a king deserves to have in life. You will never have in life that if you know internally you're a worm because worms deserve nothing, just dirt, right? So that's why self-respect is very important for both men and women. It's the single thing I, I actually look for. What, what, what is self-respect to a woman besides not being a whore? Well, self-respect also means she will leave this world better than she took it, right? Because she respects her path in this world. She respects the, the quests that her spirit came to earth uh, with. She respects uh, morality. She respects humanity itself. She just wants to leave humanity better than she took it, right? So self-respect by, um, by definition makes her respect her surroundings and ensure that she's a good mother, that she's a good wife and she's a good family member. <laughs> by, by extension of her belief system and by extension of her self-respect, she will never commit a major mistake like cheating. She will never commit a major mistake like doing an OnlyFans. She will never commit a major mistake of questioning her men in public. She will never commit a major mistake of reducing her men's um, perceived competence, even in private, because she knows <clears throat> that her man, who she, who she chose, is the father of her children and lowering his self-esteem, lowering his perceived competence will only make things worse for her. I mean, she's, by definition, self-respect leads you to the promised land. Self-respect is what keeps you on your toes to continue upgrading yourself, reading books, Self-respect is what makes you question if what you're doing is correct. Self-respect is actually everything. It was, man, Carlos, man, especially for someone as young as you. Um, and, <laughs> I'm an old man, you, bro. I, I'm, I'm 33, but I'm an old man. Yeah, yeah come on, man. Seven, you're you're a young dude. Dude, stop. You're about to be a billion in your 30s. Stop. Okay, <laughs> stop. <laughs> So, you know, I think just think men and women are very different because if a woman's not promiscuous, I think everything else falls into place. You know, uh, if a woman's not promiscuous, she's going to put their kids in front of everyone. She's going to be supportive of her men. It's only these women who are whores who fucking go around, <laughs> sweep around here and there that are, are basically fucking up society. And let's not forget these women who are basically producing babies as single mothers those babies end up being beta males and a beta male is not good for society in any way whatsoever it, it, it's basically like except they're still a little bit into women they they have pretty much no value if a man 
has no courage, if a man has no honor, he has no value. And we know, we both know that if you have beta males around you, they will sell you out in a fucking second. In a fucking second. Absolutely. It is, it is true. They're funny boys, bro. If times are good, they're with you. If times are bad, they're nowhere to be seen. That's how it is. How many people, how many people have you cut off since, uh, you know, they went after you? I want to say hundreds of acquaintances, close acquaintances, that now hit me up on WhatsApp. And, you know, I'm gracious. I'm like, hey, how you doing? I hope life is good. I hope family is good. But I keep my distance, you know. I don't let them get too close anymore. I used to get let them get too close. And, yeah, that, that bite me in the ass. But, you know, that's life. You just continue learning from these things. So you, you, and, you know, you're, actually, kind, you're kind yeah. of like Trump. You're, you're kind of like Trump. <laughs> right after the insurrection, people didn't want anything to do with him. People cut him off. Now, you know, even um, Apple is telling uh, Robert De Niro to fucking shut the fuck up and not fucking criticize Trump anymore. And, you know, that never would have happened a couple of years ago. So, you know, it's just so interesting how the pendulum always swings. Just so interesting how that works, man, in ways that yeah, people the, can't the, really imagine. Of, yeah, that's the principle of rhythm, actually. The principle of rhythm, which is one of the laws of the universe, states that um, there's two polar opposites. There's two on everything that exists, cold, hot, up, down, happiness, sadness. There's always polar opposites and there's always rhythm. So when you're hated greatly, you're also loved greatly. But if you're kind of hated, you're also kind of loved. If you're neutral, then you're neutral. And then the rhythm goes from pol polar to polar. You're extreme, from extreme to extreme, you know? And of course, when people like Trump, he's overly hated. You know that the, the pendulum will swing back. That is the law of the universe. Always does. Always does, man. You know, um, I can even recall many stories when I saw someone on top and, you know, just basically, you know, making other people feel like shit. And then within six months, the person who was on top now is on the bottom asking for handouts. I, I've seen this time and time again because people think they're supermen. I, I said this in the very beginning when I started the spaces, Carlos. Um, some of the people, I got like 3,000 students, but, you know, a small percentage of these people who I've taught numerology and astrology to now fucking claim their gods in training, now claim their fucking gods and stuff like that. And I'm like thinking like the guy who, you know, basically discovered the information doesn't think that. Why the fuck would you think that? And, you know, I, 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 I'm really happy, Carlos, that I gatekeeped a lot of this information because I understand that. Um, you know, just like with anything else, when you have great power, great knowledge, it comes with responsibility. Um, you know, not to say anything about the elite, but I understand why they gatekeep stuff because some of these people just don't know how to control their egos. Yeah, it, it, it depends. It's, what it's, it's a huge problem. It depends what your goal is, but I don't think there's a right and a wrong answer, right? Because gatekeeping information gives you power and or money, which is in a way power. But not gatekeeping information, just making it completely free, just gives you a different kind of uh, abundance, right? Gives you abundance of peace of heart, knowing you're absolutely helping the world in every way, shape, imaginable. I don't know, it's a different kind of abundance, yeah, I guess. But yeah, gatekeeping the information will get you more power, undoubtedly. That's why they gatekeep the information to keep the power. <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I've, I'll give you an example. Um, I have probably put more, more numerology and astrology content out there in the past 10 years that's original than everyone else in my field has combined. Um, but some of the people are actually taking the free information I put out there and trying to sell it to people who don't know me. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, no, that, that's, the, that's the crude reality <laughs> of the world. And, the, and that, these that, people, by that, the way, you that, don't have to do anything. They get their own karma. Oh, yeah, 100%. And it's coming next year. Because uh, 2024 is a universal eight year. I keep telling people, Carlos, a lot of people go into poverty next year. And, they, you know, they don't they, they don't understand why. It's basically karma. There's a reason number eight is basically karma and money because your karma dictates your money, too. You know, um, you know, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, they, they, they've done some things that they can get around some things. But, you know, average people on the streets, you can't do what they do. I, I I implore Should, people to be a good person. I have a question, for you, bro. I have a question yes. for you. I have a bit of a doubt, okay? I want to understand what karma is. 
and the reason I ask is because the way I understand karma is a bit different than the way people understand karma. The way mm -hmm. I understand karma is, actually, I'm going to use the example I used before, right? Imagine you walk like a king, right? I, I mean, I when I walk outside, I walk and I walk like the king. I walk like the dictator of the universe, <clears throat> really. And, and that allows me to see the world differently, right? From a different angle. I see the world mm -hmm. from the angle of the leader. And what happens as a result is that everything I do and the coincidences or synchronicities or lack that comes my way comes from the point of view of I am the king of the world, right? Now, if I mm -hmm. still, even if nobody is watching, if I still like nothing, $100, whatever, from the ground, and uh, and don't give it back, then my brain, even if I try to convince myself that I'm the king, my brain knows I'm not the king. My subconscious knows I'm not the king. My subconscious knows I'm a, I'm a worm because I stole $100. Uh -huh. So then what happens is that the vibration I give out to the outside, to the universe, is that of a worm that tries to be a king. And then I get worm, um, I get worm, um, how do you say, uh, uh, re, re, um, rewards, yeah? I get the rewards that a worm gets because that's the vibration I'm giving out to the world. But if I don't feel, then, and I truly believe I'm a king, then I walk like a king and I give out the vibration of a king. Therefore, I get the things that a king gets. Is that different from the way you see karma? Um, I believe intent matters. So, um, for instance, uh, if you're stealing, sure, um, sure. but yeah, you're stealing to you feed your kids, yeah, if you, yeah, you, if you're stealing to feed your kids, uh, I don't think any bad karma comes from that. Yeah. yeah. But Good if you're point. stealing, if you if if you're stealing just to, you know, and enrich yourself or to basically make yourself look better, yeah, I think negative karma is definitely going to hit you. The thing is, based off numerology, some people get hit faster than others. Um, some people might get hit in their next lifetime. Some people get it right away. That that is, uh, you know, what you look into numerology yeah, for I, to I, understand. I, let me help. Let, let, let me give you my thoughts, okay? Because okay, go <clears> ahead. What, you, what you just said. So you and I both know a lot of successful, powerful, very very rich people that are motherfuckers. Yes. People I don't want to yes. run anywhere close to me. Just cunts, mm -hmm. outright cunts. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, how can it go so well for them? when they're such cunts. And then my answer to you is, well, the fact that they have money is just one of the many factors in life. There's other things that I guarantee you are shit on, uh, for them. So for example, maybe because of the way they are, their relationships are shallow and poor, very horrible. Because of the way they are, they are unable to keep deep friendships and connections with people. Maybe because of the way they are, their children hate them. Maybe because of the way they are, even their parents hate them. Maybe you're not, and like it's a different kind of, let's call it karma, but or, or let's call it just rewards from the way you are. Yeah, you're rich, but on every other department, you're getting fucked. You only get respected for your money. Maybe you don't get respected for the type of man you are, and that's because you're a worm, right? So that's what I'm talking, talking about. Like, if you are a cunt that believes he is rich, right, you will be a rich cunt. That's what the universe will give you. If you are a good person that believes he's poor, poor, and therefore you need to steal for your children, that's what the universe will give you. You, you know, more things, more way, more ways, more reasons to prove the quality of your heart while showing you you're poor. So oh, I think let, let me no, let me answer. You know, it's, it's just almost like the universe doesn't care. The universe just gives you more of what you radiate. Well, let me uh, explain the best way I can. Um, I talk to a lot of rich folks, and not all of them are happy. As you know, you you got to know a lot of rich folks who aren't happy either. Um, if you have billions of dollars, but you don't have a wife and kids, then I guess that is your karma, isn't it? Because you'll never truly be happy. Or how about these OnlyFans hoes who have millions and millions of dollars, but... They don't have a bond with the man. They don't have a fucking bond with the child. All they do is they're fucking ran through horse. So yeah, money doesn't really 
do it like most people think. I don't think money buys happiness. It can lease it. I don't think it can buy it. Um, it, you know, once you, it's, it's, it's always the same, man. If you have no money, you worry about how to get money. If you have a lot of money, you worry about how to keep it safe so people don't steal it. You know, it, you're always worried about something, whether you have it or you don't have it. Um, but most of these uh, so-called people who are extremely rich and like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, Steve Jobs, perfect fucking example. Okay. Um, if most people think of Apple computers, they think of Steve Jobs. The the That's not actually how it worked. Steve Wozniak was the one who actually created Apple computers. Uh, Steve Jobs was just the face of it. Steve Jobs was an asshole to many people. Most people think that most people say they hated the guy. Uh, and they all admit he was a marketing genius, but they hated the guy. At the end of the day, he was worth billions of dollars, but he died very young. And he died with a woman who did not love him because as soon as he died, uh, that woman married someone else and now is just skating around the world with his money. So, yeah, he uh, had a lot of money, but he was not a happy man. And at the end, he was a thief. Uh, he took other people's ideas and, you know, made made them their own. And, um, you know, I think dying at a young age probably will have something to do with his karma. Yeah, could be, could be, could be. Yeah, we, we, which just goes to show exactly, like, maybe we are not that far from the way we understand karma. But I guess my explanation is more like, it, it's simply, that there's, there's like no magic per se. It's not like there's a, just God is having a staff and telling you, oh, you do bad things, you get bad things. Uh, you do good things, you get good things. It's more like, you know, when you do certain things, you radiate a vibration based on the emotions you're feeling when you're doing it. And those vibrations, that frequency <clears throat> is matched by the universe. And then that's how your universe looks like perceived by your. Well, I mean, let's, let's take for instance, uh, world leaders, uh, when, um, chairman Mao was in power in China, uh, he basically transformed that whole goddamn country into communism. And then when the people were trying in his own party was trying to push him out of power, he uh, started a cultural revolution and he kept power that way. Um, when he passed, everyone who supported him was arrested and put into you know jail, uh, including his wife and every one of his subordinates. Oh, you know, sometimes people have to understand that karma is not just theirs. It also goes through their bloodline. I'm a huge believer that my karmic actions affect my kids the same way my dad's karmic actions affected me. I, I don't think karma is just yours. I believe karma goes through the bloodline. Yeah, that makes sense to me. You know, um, when when I look at things and I look at the world, I I I, I just don't understand. You know how people cannot understand. The difference between right and wrong. I, I believe even animals, even freaking animals, understand the difference between right and wrong. I've literally seen, um, you know, tigers, uh, you know, protect sheep. Tigers protect deers, or it, it, because they're not hungry. You know, things when, when animals kill, like for instance, if you put a snake in a cage with a rat. And the snake's not hungry, that rat can step on it, that rat can bite it, the snake's not going to do a damn thing. Only when it's hungry, it attacks. So when I look at people and I look at what they do, I think intentions matter a lot more than people think. So my intent, I've told people from the very beginning, I'm going to make numerology mainstream. That was my intent. And I'm doing everything in my ability to make that possible. Now, along the way, there's going to be frauds who come along. Along the way, there's going to be a lot of stuff that tries to push back. But whenever you try to do something good, you have to expect pushing back. You have to expect that. If I uh, somehow take OnlyFans down, what do you think? I'm not going to get attacked for it. I'm taking money away from single mothers who are trying to feed their kids. They can spin thing any fucking way they want. At the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, am I doing the right thing? 
And if you can say with a conscious, clean slate that you're actually doing things to help people and not just benefit yourself, like, for instance, hell yeah, I'm the top numerologist in the world. Hell yeah, I've made bank off it. But the fact of the matter is I made it mainstream and now a lot more people know not to marry their enemy signs or a lot of people know, oh, you know, I'm not supposed to do this and this year because this is going to happen if I do. That is information I made public to the world. And uh, Carlos, I'm promising you once uh, I probably I'm probably going to do it in 2025. Once I release death code to the public, um, I promise you this world is going to change in ways that most people could not believe at this point. Um, we we all know what the future is, my friend. And um, all I can tell to everyone who's listening is soak this in, man. Soak this in. Uh, this is, I, I know quite a few people who are worth 100 million plus. Uh, this is one of the more genuine guys. You know, this is a guy who you can sit down with and talk to. He won't look at you. You know, as long as you bring value, um, this is a man who will listen to you. Unlike uh, someone like Mark Cuban or other billionaires who I've met in my life who, you know, who did, Mark Cuban basically told me this. He said he would rather lose his way than win my way. <laughs> at that point there's nothing you can do at that point there's nothing you can do man. There, Bro, there's you know, literally you know, you know, nothing I, you I, can I, do i um had a conversation with mark cuban at the very beginning of my company and um and i offered him investment very early on and and uh, he's he was just outright laughing at, my, at me and my idea and everything dumb yep. fuck yep. dumb fuck this is like this is someone this is someone um that that could be owning video games globally right now if he would be uh, slightly uh, actually a slightly better human let alone yeah uh, but yeah yeah you're, you're not... uh, 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 this mark cuban was emailing me uh in the very beginning of the year including last year telling me i'm a bad father because i didn't vaccinate my kids i would literally wake up and the first email I see is from Mark Cuban saying, uh, uh, I'm a bad person because I didn't vaccinate my kids. For, for people who are saying I'm lying, I'll post the fucking email. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll basically block out his email because I don't want people fucking pounding his ass. But, you know, he basically told me I'm a bad father because I didn't vaccinate my kids. And uh, I, you know what's funny about him? Uh, he agreed to sell the Dallas Mavericks. And he told me he would never do that. So I messaged him. And I'm like, you okay? Everything okay with you? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still going to be in control of the team. I'm thinking that starting to have its effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, dude. I, 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 I give it to the man, though. Like, it doesn't matter how, how many people email him, bro. He will answer you. It's unbelievable, actually. Yeah, he, he's, uh, bro, bro. I literally have a thousand emails from this guy. Bro, Literally a thousand emails does. from this guy. I don't know how the fuck. Well, I do know how the fuck he does it. He doesn't use caps lock or or commas or periods or he just answers you yes, no, bad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, one thing. Yeah. I, that's one thing I did. Um, you know, uh, commend Mark on. He doesn't give a fuck about spelling. I'm, so when bro, people talk about my spelling fuck. on I mean, Twitter, I'm honestly, like, like, go like, talk to guys, Mark Cuban. The reason he's successful. Yeah, yeah. The reason he's successful is because he's working twenty four. He really is working twenty four seven. Really. Yeah, he's born on the thirty first. He should. <laughs> oh, there, there you go. There you go. Actually, by the he's, way, he's I got heard, that I heard... four energy just like you, brother. And he's a horse. Yeah. I'm no. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's a dog. Yeah, yeah. My bad. He's a he, they, horses tend to be a little bit more intelligent. They, I, nowadays. I heard. I heard some. Uh, I heard some uh, conspiracy about uh, about. Um, the 31st, like over the years, the 31st being uh, uh, like this encouraged by the system or by, by, by the elite, essentially to reduce the amount of 31st people uh, over the years, because 31st is such a strong date for success. Okay. Basically, just the number hey. four in general is such a strong date for success. And 31st as a day was just... <clears throat> very uh uh i don't know very impactful yeah so a lot of people um ask is if four is a wealth number 
because um, quite a few people who are fours tend to have some money. Uh, the fact of the matter is four is not a wealth number, but people who are fours just outwork everybody else that much more than they get money because they just outwork people. Um, if I put a 28 in the room and a 31 in the room, uh, the 28 is going to have more money doing less work. That's just uh, the way it works. But um, if you take that one number out, the 28 or the eight and something like that, yeah, you're going to see a lot of fours um, go out there and, you know, get theirs because they basically outwork everybody else. You know, um, there's different paths for everyone to have money. I mean, listen, um, a lot of people out there who consider four a number of wealth, and the reason they consider it is because I wrote a PSYOP about 2020 for all the people who are trying to steal my info. I wrote a PSYOP and I put it in numerology websites and all this other stuff. And in there, it said four is number of wealth. And that's where this is all coming from because since I blew up and I got like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Since I blew up and I got like 2,000 uh, views this year on IG and TikTok and all this, um, now people are, you know, trying to dig up that information. So, you know, I had a little leak about 10 years ago, but I've covered it up with like fucking 30 psyops. No one's going to know what's real or not. So. It is what it is. Uh, at my top levels, no one knows what the fuck I'm doing anyway. It, it, you know what the best part is, Carlos? Even with all this information I released, no one still has any idea what I'm teaching in my courses. <laughs> no one still has any clue. <laughs> it's yeah, it's kind of wonderful. It's kind of wonderful, you know, because I know my monopoly is never going to end. And that I should have a monopoly I mean, I because I'm the one who fucking made it mainstream. Yeah, but you know, fuck mainstream, fuck the fuck retail. Like, think about. I mean, I put you in touch with uh, shakes from here and people from here from uh, the area, and uh, everybody, somebody meets meets with you and speaks with you. They just want to refer you to another ten uh, multi mega billionaires, not the official ones that you see in Forbes. That is bullshit. Of course, the, of course. The proper oil, the proper oil machines, friends of ours, and and yeah, you continue getting. Uh, these types of, uh, I mean, you will, okay, you will never lack food, food on the plate. That's what I'm trying to say. Never, 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 never. But I mean, listen, I'm not going to make this stuff mainstream by talking to, you know, billionaires and sheiks and stuff like that. You have to, you know, go down to the degenerates. And, you know, you like, for instance, um, you didn't know who I was last year. We only met this year. And the reason that happened is because I went out and I did things I didn't want to do. Mess around with OnlyFans, ho whores, uh, you know, have podcasts with them, uh, deal with Zerka and, you know, all these other guys. Uh, that, that was a part of the You're process. You're fucking crazy. Listen, before I, before I deal with talent, <laughs> the way I see you dealing with talent, I kill myself, bro. Like this is, this, this is the single most... Uh, I don't know, low level shit, bro. I, I, I commend you for doing this for the good reason, yeah? But I wouldn't spend a millisecond, a millisecond managing these people. I'm be fucking livable. I know, bro. I know. I'm done with all that. Here's the Jewish move. You got in, got the club yep. out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 100%, man. 100% Jewish stuff. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no <laughs> doubt good. about it. But, but it worked, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it worked. Uh, sure a, it worked. a lot of people sure were questioning what the fuck I was doing. You know, um, a lot of people were questioning what the fuck I was doing. But at the end of the day, it worked. It absolutely worked. And you know, I, I told you in private conversations, I'm gonna, I tell the world all the time, I will fucking, you know, do in 2025. What um you know the tiger did in 2022, I'm gonna make that happen, because that's the goal I have. And afterwards, then I'll go into the sunset and only deal with the sheiks. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I I gotta, I gotta tell you, you know, you, you say <coughs> I work very hard and I do, but my job has changed significantly, bro, since I moved to Dubai. You know, I used to be office office rat, um, 14 hours a day. No, I still work, but it's, it's different work, you know? So whenever you feel like you want to scale your wealth and your presence and power around the world, come to my site. We, we conquer from here.
I'll, I'll come visit you in Dubai next year, brother. It's going to be Thank glorious. Uh, too many, too too many people uh, want me to come, but uh, just make sure I got armed security out there when I go out there. <laughs> security for what? You don't need security. You you you'd be surprised, my friend. You'd be no, surprised. No, here, bro. Here, impossible. You don't need nothing, bro. Here, bro. Here, you you will have the 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 biggest Albanian drug lords. Just walking freely in Dubai Mall. It's no problem. Like there's this is Dubai, brother. This is not low level shit. No, nobody. No, no. I, 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 I get it. I get it. You, you, you know? know damn well. You know damn well. Some people want me. Um, I've been threatened not to come to Dubai. I'm, I'm pretty sure you have. Uh, good. Bro, okay, I put my hand on fire. Zero percent chance anything ever happens. If any anybody that told you this, either doesn't really live in Dubai or doesn't fucking know what they're talking about. No, they, 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 they've they lived in Dubai before. Just got to just gotta make sure that, you know, one of the reasons I haven't been to Saudi Arabia yet is because I don't think they'll let me leave. <laughs> so it is what it was. I got a really good life here in Miami, man. You know, uh, I got to be honest with you. Um, if it wasn't for Miami, I'd probably move out of America. I, I couldn't live in fucking LA. <laughs> I, I could, I couldn't, I couldn't live in Las Vegas because I have a family by myself. Obviously, I could, but um, if it was, if it's not for in Miami, I'd probably move out of this goddamn country. Black the hell out, man. I, you know, I, I consider myself living in the best place in America. If you if, let me, if yeah, you no have, doubt. if you have money and you live in America and you don't live in Miami, you're, you're out of your fucking mind. You're honestly yeah, you out of your you fucking mind. Rat. That's why you are like maybe <laughs> you're getting paid 800k, but you work in fucking Google in South California, then you might as well kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, it is what it is. I, I, I definitely one of the things I enjoy with my life is um, I have no boss. No one can tell me what to do. I decide when I work. I decide what I do. I can spend time with my family whenever I want to. My kids are around me more than most fathers have their kids around them. I enjoy stuff like that, man. I really do. Like, for instance, uh, my content house is like two minutes away from my real house in, in the scooter. So, you know, I, everything's so close here. Brother, it, fuck, cool. you fuck you, you, you fuck your Achilles. God is talking to you. Okay. God is talking to you. Just, just buy a Cadillac. Hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Carlos. You fucked up your Achilles too. We're both in 2023, and that's a seven universal <laughs> year. Come on now. Okay, 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 okay. What was my lesson to learn? Okay, I was angry that day. Okay, I will just not be angry anymore. That's it. Oh, 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 oh shit, man. Um, what was my lesson to learn? Uh, probably that I need to slow the fuck down, bro. I was just doing way too much. Uh, you know. Okay, uh, okay, Gary. I, just, just picture this. Who drives these fucking things? Just picture the usual suspect. Okay, if I tell you, hey, Gary, today I saw someone driving one of those little fucking things. Now, I'm, I'm not going gonna, gonna to tell you it's a guy, okay? Now, mm -hmm. you have to picture this person in your head. Who do you picture? I know exactly the type of person you picture. Motherfucker is a <laughs> hipster, okay? He's a hipster. Probably plays video games. He probably has a... T-shirt with an anime, like some kind of uh, Attack on Titan or something like this. Okay. What is he on the way to? He's on the way to get some documentation from the government for some nonsense that he's working on. What else? Just uh, keep, keep painting this person. It's a fucking loser, bro. Loser. I get it. Uh, I got you. Um, you haven't seen my scooter, though. My scooter is like the Ben, the Bentley of oh, fucking scooter. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, my scooter is like five thousand dollars, bro. I'm not driving no fucking five hundred dollar scooter. I, I, before shit. my before my injury happened, I was about to buy an eight thousand dollar scooter that went like seventy five miles what per the hour. Fuck is so, that, so, bro? so 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 maybe my injury happened, so I didn't buy the other one and didn't kill myself. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, my brother. Listen, I have to, I have to leave. Okay, I have to leave. But uh, I, I, I love you, my, my, my bro, Gary. Best of luck. Hey, uh, brother, you're, 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 
You're my you're my okay. brother. Uh, hit, hit me up on a WhatsApp. We'll have a private talk. Perfect. Anybody listening? Um, I I tell you that everybody that uh, has been in touch with Gary, just talking about numbers and talking about I mean what he does is a combination of numbers and astrology. I guess you can say has been just fucking shocked. And these are people that lead the world actually. And not and, and now every time I make an introduction, I do so with an with the absolute reassurance that <clears throat> uh, just that mere introduction will increase my status and my standing with this person because I know that Gary will add value to them. So if he's adding value to multi-gazillionaires <clears throat> that are happy, have villas, zoos in their homes, and palaces where you need actual cars to move from wife number one home to wife number four <laughs> home, you need seven <laughs> minutes, the fucking palaces have traffic lights, okay? These people are hopping in calls with Gary. So um, if, if they're taking their counsel, then you should too. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, you get many members. Not because I want you to get money, which of course, yes, but also because I know that each of the members that deploy time in learning will, will improve their lives. And that is always a good thing. I appreciate your kind words, brother. Um, everyone here, follow Carlos. Uh, Future billionaire, he's already halfway there, and um, quite frankly, so I I've am met, a um, it's just in the way to me. Well, um, okay, my bad. Well, y y if you're not there yet, you'll be there there shortly. But you know, y you're in the nine to ten figure range, and the fact of the matter is, this is a very genuine person. I know too many fucking billionaires. I don't like them. All right, I want to make this clear. I don't like most of these billionaires. I know. Uh, they 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 fucking deal with me because they have to. I'm the best of the best, and they pay me. But with Carlos, it's not about that. We just generally have good conversations. And um, this is a man who um, is morally very sound. And that actually says a lot, you know, when you are at that echelon. Um, thank you for the car, uh, kind words, Carlos. Thank you for joining the space. Thanks, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk and soon. Have a good day, everybody. Yes, sir. Anyways, uh, that was Carlos. Uh, Carlos is um, one of the more genuine rich people out there. Most rich people are pieces of fucking trash. I'm not talking about millionaires. I'm, I'm talking about billionaire range. Um, he's one of their, uh, I have given readings to so many people that he has um, put me in contact with. So, you know, when I tell people I deal with, you know, billionaires and millionaires, well, there's one of them. <laughs> there's one of them right there. And it, 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 you people don't quite get this. I didn't need to do this. I didn't need to get famous, okay? I didn't need to make numerology mainstream. I could have quite easily took all this knowledge I had and just dealt with the rich people my whole life. But I didn't do that. I actually gave a gift to the world. Not only that, I put a lot of people on. There's a lot of people who are working for me, making a living off this now. Okay, I put a lot of people on. I didn't have to. I did. Um, to the people out there, uh, I'm I'm gonna do my best to make the world a better place before I die than when I came in, and I'm gonna do my best to enlighten as many people as possible. But I'm not a saint. And if you were trying to scam people in my name, if you're opening up troll accounts on Twitter, IG, to pretend to you me to scam people out of money, if you're fucking copying and pasting and claiming you have my work just so you can fucking build clout and get money, I promise you, on my life, I will come for every single one of you. I don't care if you're in the United States, Nigeria, I don't give a fuck where you're at. I will find a way. Because that to me is more important than being a billionaire. Getting even. I've done, I've been too kind with the world. I, I, on, on the flip side, I got to say, I got some of the most loyal people in the world, you know, with me. A lot of people in my group are extremely loyal. And it's just like Carl said, because I add value. To these people 
you know, unless you're their family and you shouldn't be loyal unless they add value. And I add value. I tell people I'm going to change their lives with knowledge. And that's exactly what I do. There's not one person who will say any different. Even the people who attack me and hate me are still using the stuff I put out there. How many people out there do their enemies still use their system? It is what it is. Anyways, um, uh, God damn, it's seven o'clock in the fucking morning already. Uh, Emperor three, uh, safe trip home. Uh, piggy, I'll give you a call in a bit. Uh, where's the other piggy at? T -t 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 oh, I guess you are. Oh, there you are. Uh, other piggy, uh, 71. Why don't you, uh, come on by and we'll put a couple in the air. Other than that, <laughs> gotta love spaces because someone's my next door oh, neighbors listening in, like, come by and smoke. <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, I hope everyone has a good day. And this has been a GT33 production.